And the reason why I be called it the called it superhuman is because you are you are supernatural at your source. Okay. Like you are 80% non-physical. You have a body. Okay. And you have a human spirit. So when we kind of look at this idea of us becoming gods in bodies, all right, that has always been your potential. It has always been your factory settings. If you were left alone and loved and nurtured properly, this would not be a spiritual journey. There would not be a healing journey. There would not be a knowledge journey because you actually come completely equipped with all the knowledge you'll ever need, with all of the power that you will ever need to be able to access and work through and utilize within your own body. Your body is designed to upgrade, to defy gravity, to defy time and space. Your, your body is very malleable in what it is capable of mirroring you. But see, that's the magic. Your body can only mirror what you believe about yourself in your subconscious mind. That's that that's the that's the disclaimer. Because what you think in your conscious mind is what you've been studying. It is that knowingness, it is that nobility, it is that kind of remembrance of, yeah, this is who I am. But the subconscious mind has been the part of you that has been constantly collecting baggage throughout your whole life that literally is designed and programmed for you to believe the opposite about this. So there is like a catch in this ascension process. And when we wake up and we start kind of like asking those bigger questions and, and looking and looking into things that really resonate with us and jumping into classrooms and learning modalities and, and connecting with the spirit realm, none, none of that deprograms your subconscious mind. None of it, okay? What we've done is we have included more data about what we've always felt in there. Now, when you have really changed a belief system through living a completely different lifestyle, then that is something that has changed in the subconscious. But most of us wake up, we feel very triggered by our families and the environment and the world, and then we go on a search. OK, and the search is to connect with things, information, people, teachers, music, um, modalities that resonate with who we are remembering that we are. And that is usually what feels amazing. That is what lights you up. That is kind of where you're like, yes, this is what I'm here to do. This is who I'm here to be. And then we kind of feel like very turned off by the third dimensional world. We feel very turned off by money. We feel very turned off by things that are happening in the world. And if we are intelligent enough to realize that we are a mirror of what we are seeing, then at that point we would turn inwardly and we would start unpacking the belief systems that are at the fundamental root of our vibration and, and then basically reprogramming in what we are choosing to choose, like what we are seeing that we love instead of like, oh, I don't want to believe that 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 we're in lack. I want to believe that we're in abundance. Okay, let me repack that in the subconscious mind. So ultimately, there is no like becoming superhuman. And, and you know, there is a going back to factory settings. I know that's not as sexy and as fun, but that's actually the only thing we're going to be doing this year is getting back to the root, the core of the potential that you started off with. Okay. And I, again, I couldn't tell you right now how many thousands of years your baggage has been sitting in this world. Okay. If you feel like a very old soul, that's not a compliment. That means that we've been here a while and that we keep like waking up and then like, forgetting to unpack that damn baggage and now we have to get reborn and incarnated in the exact summary frequency that we left so if you started off rough okay then it was probably because you left rough 
And you're going to, you're always going to attract the opposite vibration so that you can play out the entire segment. So there's going to be a lot of our non-duality kind of conceptual learning in this class this year, because when you, when you really begin to understand that both separation, supernatural separation is required for your expansion. So supernatural energy that is divine in nature, that is all holistic, holy spirited, is eternal. It is life. It is expansion. It is growth. It is more. And it is ever making more. Okay. So eventually, like if the seeds of the tree continued to drop and air didn't move them around, there would be so many trees in that area that it would literally start to kind of die. So when God split, the, the, the story of the Bible is that, that, that Satan decided that he wanted to be God and didn't like the way God was setting up this whole human thing because humans were going to outrank the angels. Okay, this is the story. And, and then, so God was like, upset well get out of here okay you can go have this world but if you actually look at this metaphysically and you look at some like someone who is very close let's take one of your kids all of you have either a kid or a family member that is very much like you they are going to be the ones that trigger you the most okay so if, if like if satan was god's best angel and and it was made like first okay then it's going to be the closest thing to him and the way that he could get all the way back to himself is to turn it into the opposite side of him so if you looked at a 50 cent coin you could not spend it if the tail was not there so when you kind of look at this idea of dark and light and Satan and Christ and this war, this is a game. And the more opposition that falls upon us, the faster we will wake up. I promise you. Like what is going to transcend this year is going to create so much spiritual muscle in you and so much focus like you're gonna get serious this year because your spiritual journey has been your passion project it has not been where your life has depended on it and this year your life will literally depend on your spiritual muscle so up until now it's like oh i study this but i don't really tell anybody and i don't really have anybody to talk to and now it's going to be like i'm living this because that is where we are and instead of us looking at, oh my gosh, like Satan is winning because it's here and it's here and it's here and it's here and it's here. But that is not you. And so because you outrank that energy and you have and you are made in the image of God itself, then God is going to expect a lot more from us than we even really truly understand in the eye of creator. So what we want to really do is we want to look at this entire year as nothing more than getting back to our factory settings where we can see this as a game, where we can see this as, okay, I have a strategy because I have been working literally my ass side of the tail of the coin off this theater to find this strategy, to find this, this, how this all actually works. And I have to look at it from three different perspectives in order to wrap myself around an understanding which i want to share with you as well because most of you guys come from a solid metaphysical background okay or a a been hurt by the church and so you found metaphysics and that resonated with you or you still have some of the church love but you understand more from a universal spiritual like manifestational which is technically metaphysics okay but what we want to understand is, is that you're, you have three different aspects that 
want to understand this journey for you, want to understand this reality. And there's going to be parts of you that just do not understand the metaphysical part. There's going to be part of you that just does not understand the story. There's going to be part of you that doesn't understand the emotional part of it. And that's why I want to kind of like, as I show you the game, I want to show you it in three different perspectives. So all three aspects of you are going to enjoy this. Okay. Because it's like, if I just give you frequency and vibration, the inner child inside of you is going to be like, what's going to happen to money? What's going to happen to our life? What's going to happen to my house? Right? Because there is a human in you. And this human is the one that has been the most neglected out of all of you. The, the human in you has been forced into slavery on this planet. So the human in you doesn't trust you all the way because you don't take care of it the way that God would probably take care of you. Okay. And so there's going to be some factory settings because before, before you were separated from source, you were just nothing but curious potential. And the curiosity was not, let me find out who I am. Have you ever seen a child say, can you please tell me who I am? Have you ever met a child that said, I'm here to figure out who I am? Never. Every single child on the planet is like, look what I can do. Look what I can do. I just can do this or I'm learning how to do this. And there is nothing more because there is no question. The questions begin around the age five because this game is set up a very specific way to separate you from source, to separate you from remembering and reminding yourself. So what happens is every single thing that is natural to who you are as a supernatural being is taught opposite. Just like when you start to see this game, the character of Satan has built his entire kingdom out of God's model. Everything. Everything. He has even gotten so obsessed with the idea of God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ that he has developed personality disorder and become three devils in one, which means that he acts as all three of what God is. He has one called Satan. He has one called Lucifer and he has one called Beelzebub and all three of those are the same dude. And how this works is he works it just like God would in reverse. So who is Christ to humanity? Well, he's the savior. All right. Well, then you're going to have Lucifer. Then you're going to have this God is Satan. Okay. And then Beelzebub is going to be like, instead of the Holy Spirit, it's going to be the one that makes you unholy. It's going to be the one that puts these really icky thoughts in your head. It's going to be the one that, you know, gets the water tainted so you wake up homosexual okay this is what we're going to be dealing with so we have we have the model and then we have opposite in every platform of the kingdom of heaven's design is what we are living as slaves so what we've got to learn is we've got to understand what the kingdom of heaven actually looks like from instead of slave mindset of are there at least one good politician left to self-governorship and understanding that the role that you will play first is not going to be governor or politician of the kingdom of heaven where we start is as an ambassador because an ambassador doesn't actually own anything, but they are fully protected because of their citizenship. So if I was an ambassador for America, but I lived in France, I wouldn't have to abide by any of the French rules while I was in the embassy. Which means that if France was starving to death, I could be eating steak every day in the embassy. I would not have to abide by the rules of this 
this operation if I am an ambassador. Okay, so this is kind of where we are going to start working with our Holy Spirit sea legs. And so what we've got to do is we've got to work simultaneously on building our connection with the Holy Spirit. And we are going to simultaneously unpack the baggage that is keeping us stupid, basically, and asleep and afraid and programmed and confused and, you know, enslaved. So that is kind of like what we're going to be doing this year.